University. I oversee both the financial planning as well as the student accounts office here at the university. So I'd be able to assist you with any questions you may have regarding uh, your student account as well as uh, financial aid that you may be receiving. To, to jump right into things, I'm gonna start right off by talking a little bit about uh, the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. This is something that you would wanna complete uh, to be considered for any type of financial aid that you may be receiving. Uh, one thing that's unique to High Point University is that you do not need to complete the FAFSA if you are only going to be receiving institutional merit aid. Some schools do require that you do the FAFSA regardless if you're planning on taking any additional aid outside of that of what the institution offers you. High Point University does not require that you do a FAFSA. Um, however, if you are interested in receiving any type of fake of federal, state, or institutional need-based aid, you would want to complete the FAFSA form. It is also required uh, to be eligible for loan eligibility um, on the federal level, as well as state, some state loan funds that are available to you. And this is also true if your parents are planning on taking out a Parent PLUS loan. So just a little bit more about the FAFSA. The FAFSA becomes available each year as of October 1st for the next academic year. So the FAFSA is already available for you to complete now for next year's enrollment. The FAFSA uses your prior year's tax information. So for example, if you're filling out the FAFSA now for the 21-22 academic year, you would be using the tax information that you had filed for 2019. And then ideally, families should be filing the FAFSA sometime between October and January um, so that we have the information to be able to package our students as soon as possible. There are some aid funds on uh, the federal level as well as the state level that uh, once they're awarded uh, out to, to their maximum, there is the chance of not being able to continue to receive them even if you have need to, to receive them otherwise. Some more information about the FAFSA is available on our website. Uh, you can go to highpoint.edu backslash financial planning. Um, and then there's a tab specifically for steps of completing the FAFSA, or you can use the, the um, link that I have listed there. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the different types of aid that you may be eligible for. First, you have programs. As I had said already, you have your federal and state programs. You also have private programs and institutional aid programs available. And then you have types of aid. You have merit aid, which is your academic, your need-based aid, and your talent aid. This could be athletics, it could be uh, music, and then finally, you'll have your forms of aid. You have your grants and scholarships versus your loans. Grants and scholarships are, uh, are free money that you do not have to worry about repaying, while loans are and just that. It's money that is lent to you that you then have to repay. Typically, it doesn't begin repayment until after college, depending on the type of loans that we're speaking of. And again, on our website, there's more information on this under the uh, the assistance programs tab. So start off with a little more details on the federal aid programs. You have your federal grant programs that are available to you. This is your, fe your federal Pell Grant, your supplemental educational opportunity grant, uh, most commonly referred to as your SCOG award, and you have the federal work study program. The other thing I will point out that's unique to High Point University is even if you do not qualify for federal work study, we generally offer positions for students on campus um, as a premier life skill university. It's something that we value very much. 
in that we make jobs available to all of our students, regardless if they are federal work study eligible or not. Uh, the big difference between that is a federal work study, you are restricted some in the amount of hours that you're able to work uh, because it is um, receiving federal funding uh, that's available to you, as opposed to a non-work study job um, that doesn't necessarily have this, those same restrictions. And then there's two types of student loans that are available to you. You have your subsidized Stafford loans and your unsubsidized Stafford loans. The big difference between these two is that your subsidized Stafford loans do not accrue any interest while you are in attendance. Both of these loans do not go into repayment until after you have completed your program, um, but you will start to accrue that interest on your unsubsidized loans immediately. The other thing I'll point out is that the subsidized loan is a need-based program, which I'll talk a little bit more about need in a few moments. And then last of the federal programs is the Parent PLUS loan. Uh, this is a loan that would ultimately be in your parent's name. They're taking it out on your behalf. Um, that would then be dispersed to your account here at the university. This does require a credit check um, to ensure that your parents are credit worthy of receiving the loan uh, for that to then go into repayment again uh, after you have finished your program or if your parent elects to, they can start paying that loan immediately. Then we get into our state aid programs. Uh, this is available to students that are North Carolina residents uh, that may be eligible for this state aid. It is a need-based program, <clears throat> excuse me, um, set up very similarly to the, the federal Pell program in awarding students based on need. The one restriction that is required of this is that families live in the state of North Carolina for a minimum of a year in order to be eligible for this grant money. Uh, just like having to complete the FAFSA form, uh, North Carolina residents do have to complete a residency verification to ensure that they are, are eligible as North Carolina residents. Next up is your private aid programs. Uh, there are thousands of private scholarships and grants available to students each year. Now is the time that you should be looking for those scholarships and grants and applying for them for the next year. In addition to all of the national programs that are out there, I always encourage students to look within their own community, whether it be a church, employers, um, someone that you may be employed with or your parents are employed with, and community organizations that your family may be involved with. I always caution to look out for scams. You should never have to pay to apply for a scholarship. Uh, this should always be free money. It should be a free application. And so always be a little leery if they are and asking for you to make some type of payment in order to apply for a scholarship the likelihood is it's not a real scholarship that will ever be awarded. The other type of private programs that are available are alternative loans. Uh, this is something that, that is helpful should your parent not be able to take out a Parent PLUS loan, um, or if uh, they don't qualify for a Parent PLUS loan, and perhaps you have another family member that'd be willing to help you out. Uh, on our website, under the Loans tab, you will find what's called Fast Choice, which is a search engine that will ultimately compare all of the different loan options available to you and, and look at the different rates and eligibility to, to give you some options of the different choices that you can take. And then lastly, of all the programs, is our institutional aid programs. You have your merit scholarships that come through our admissions office and based on your academic achievement. You have your talent scholarships, which include your athletics, as well as uh, some scholarships such as theater and art and other performance programs that you may be eligible for. 
And then lastly, you have your high point university need based scholarships, which are awarded through my area in financial planning based on your financial need. So before I talk a little bit about financial need, it's important to understand what determines cost of attendance first. The cost of attendance is broken into two primary components. You have your direct cost, which is your tuition and fees, room and board. These are the things that you're then essentially charged by the university directly onto your student account. Then you have your indirect costs. You have things like books and supplies. You have transportation, should you be commuting to campus. And then you have personal costs. Um, and this could be everything from um, clothing to laundry to incidental costs that you may incur throughout the semester uh, and throughout the academic year that you would need to pay for. All of this together is what makes up your cost of attendance. In most instances, your financial aid cannot exceed this cost of attendance, especially when you're looking at federal and state aid, uh, and they are restricted in that they, they are not expected to go beyond what that cost of attendance would be for you. So then what determines need? Your need is determined based on that FAFSA that we talked about in the beginning, the information that you provide. It ultimately comes back with what then the, the federal government says is your estimated family contribution or EFC is another acronym that you will hear commonly used throughout the financial aid world. Uh, this is what the, the, the information that you had provided on the FAFSA comes back to us saying, this is what is felt your family can contribute towards your college education. Your financial need is then made up of that cost of attendance we just went over, less what your family contribution would be. In most instances, the maximum amount of need-based aid that you would be able to receive would be based on that financial need calculation. So in addition to all of the financial aid options that we make available to you here at High Point University, the university does also offer monthly payment plans if you'd rather not take out things such as loans uh, to help finance your education. These payment plans are offered on a semesterly basis with the fall one beginning in June and your spring payment plan beginning in November. And both of the plans are run for five months uh, that allow for, for the payments to be spread amongst those five months. So essentially 10 out of the 12 months in the year, you would be able to spread those payments out for. So there's a, some important dates that you may want to keep in mind uh, with regard to and make sure that you keep everything on track as you're planning out your finances to come here to High Point University. The first is in filing that FAFSA. Uh, again, it, it opened up as of October 1st. We recommend that you try to have it done by January 31st so that we have the information to be able to pull into our system accordingly. Between January and February is when admissions will be sending out your merit awards and giving you that information. Then in March and April is when your full financial aid package would be finalized and sent out to you. You would then receive your fall statement um, on or around June 1st, which would then enable you to enroll in a payment plan for the upcoming fall semester. And then lastly, you have your fall payment deadline uh, that comes in early July. Th this will give you some time to be able to either enroll in a payment plan, finalize your financial aid, or have everything in place for you to arrive on campus in August.